Welcome to the Muskegon Channel. It's Andy O'Reilly and today I'm out of Muskegon Community College. We are here today to talk about, a, well, it's a seminar. Is it a seminar? It's a panel. It's a panel that's coming up. You may remember Annie Donnellwald. She is one of my uh, partners in crime. Well, what has it been, five years now that we've known each other? I think so. Somewhere in that ballpark? That's a long time. It's a it's long been time. It's 450 years. It's, it seems like it. <laughs> and she, I met Annie when I was in the radio in Grand Rapids, and she has become one of my heroes. She is absolutely amazing with what she's done with Eve's Angels. A uh, newer friend, Connie Nesbury, is here. And we met Connie a few weeks ago when we talked about her radio documentary involving trafficking and somehow through the magic of the internets and the interwebs and all everything I do I managed to put these two together and it's time to get out of the way because we have found a dynamic duo and in no the fight pressure. of human yeah. trafficking and we mean no pressure no pressure come on you've been at this for how long now doing what you can do with these angels to stop uh, we started in 2010 officially yeah but uh, a couple years of research and a lifetime of experience of living it yeah your story is quite hot and you've, you've got the book out you've done the national media tours you've done all the big things and now you've 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 gotten the house which will yep. will keep secret because it's kind of a, a, a big deal it's a deal it is and you you get women out of this trafficking industry and you give them a second chance at life and it's really a, a miracle what you do it's something it is <laughs> you won't take credit and and you know this is the part where Annie's always kind of quiet when she starts and then she starts to open up as time goes on so stick around she'll get there <laughs> I'll get there. she'll get there and then you're Connie you did the yeah, the radio the documentary which is 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 taken off yes ran here yes. in Muskegon and now it's, it's over in Grand Rapids to spread out yeah so it's exciting the dynamic duel on yes. human trafficking you were gonna take it take gonna, it over well just, I mean, you just <laughs> added to the fold. You've taken it over years ago. I mean, that's all there is yeah. to it. This this discussion, this panel that's coming up, it's called the real face of sex trafficking. Let's talk a little bit about. I mean, I know this is a this is a big deal for you because there's there's a lot that people don't hear about. There's a lot of things that people don't know that I haven't spoken on for several reasons, and you know, Connie has been there for me quick. Yeah. You know, when we met, it wasn't that long ago, but it feels like it was. And, um, you know, having her own experience and, and being a licensed professional even, she's able to help me and go through, you know, what Stockholm Syndrome is and what it looks like to have repressed memories and dealing with triggers and dealing with all these things. And not only helps me, but, you know, the residents, like you said, we have that safe home, mm -hmm. so it helps um, them and, and me help train staff and educate the public and, and just to see what we're looking at because I think that that's, the key that's the door right yeah is that we have to understand what specifically it is that we're looking at because it's way way more common and yeah. I think we've had lots of conversations yeah and and the more survivors understand what they're dealing with the easier they can say oh I need this and, yeah. and, and get it and take care of themselves and I think too it helps you not feel so isolated you know there's a campaign right now going on on Facebook where everybody's hashtagging me too yeah and, I've seen that the last I had to days. look it up I, I don't watch the news or really stay too long on social media but um, I had to look it up because there were so many people saying hashtag me too hashtag and then I found out that um, you know it's survivors of sexual assault you know right. um, rape um, exploitation all of it and the amount of women that are now coming out in a public forum you know I think that's where um, where social media and different things that works for us rather than against us that right. there's there's an awareness and there's an awakening that's happening and at the same time, you know, we're meeting the right people, and synchronicity is kind of helping us out. Beautiful. She uses big words like that, doesn't she? Yeah. Synchronicity. Yeah, wow. That's quite a <laughs> I was going to say God, but I didn't want to be offensive. But I talk about Jesus all the time. What's offensive about that? I mean, there's nothing to be offensive yeah, there. I, I think you're in good company. I think you're safe mentioning that around here. So as this panel approaches, it's October 30th. It's going to be right here at Muskegon Community College. Right. Let's talk about this panel a little bit, Kikani. Tell me a little bit about what people can expect. This is open to the public to come and see. Yes. Okay. Yes. It's 7 o'clock at night, October yep. 30th, Monday, down in Collegiate Hall. Okay. And um, Senator Judy Emmons will be here. Okay. I know she's a big ally in your fight. She is. Tell me about yes. Judy Emmons. She approached me uh, years ago, maybe around the same time you and I did that interview. Okay. Um, when Eves was first kind of making its way into yeah. the public eye and um, she said listen I want to know about trafficking and I don't think that reading books about it I think the, is the way to get to know the subject matter mm -hmm. I think the way to get to know it is you know ground troopers you know people like yourself that have 
firsthand knowledge. And I applaud her because that was probably the smartest thing she did, you know, was being able to say, as a professional in this lane, yeah. I don't know what you know. Right. Can I know what you know so I can make the state better? And in doing so, she ended up passing like a stupid amount of laws against trafficking. If we could just get everybody to enforce them, we'd be a lot better off. Didn't mean to interrupt, but you know, she, okay. she knows the senator, senator. So tell me more now. Yes. Well, uh, uh, Professor David Manville will be here also. Okay. He's from Eastern Michigan University. He has the only course in Michigan on human trafficking. Okay. So he's a really important piece. And then, of course, Annie will talk. And I will be there answering questions on how trauma affects the survivors. It's, it's a multi-level problem. Yes. I mean, it's a problem while it's going on. It's something that lingers yes. for the, the victims of, of this problem. And, and it's something that, that, that continues to happen. It's not going away anytime soon. Go ahead. Right. Right. <laughs> I, I was just going to say, you know, I, th I think most men are honorable, yeah. but unfortunately, they're the ones that are going to have to stand up and stop this and start recognizing when it's happening and um, start saying this is not OK. Yeah. Give me some examples. I think that the revolution, because that's what we need. Yeah. Um, this is such an epidemic. People don't know. You know, they think when they first hear this word called trafficking, um, they think it's either happening overseas or they believe it's happening, you know, in the ghetto or they believe that it's happening not anything affecting them. Um, when in reality, if people really understood how intrinsic it is to every system in the country and how high it goes up okay. and how low it goes and it's everywhere, um, I think they, I mean, in my experience, and you've probably mm -hmm. had the same experience, it's one of two reactions. It's either they want to bury their head and not hear any more about it. Yeah. Um, actually, there's three reactions. They're part of the problem. Yeah. Um, and so they have to save face in meetings. and then, um, Or they want to know more. And they, you can't, it, it's not one of those things where you're like, oh, that's a good story. Yeah. You know, and then they, they go away. And so um, I think it's time to rip the blinders off. I think in order to solve the problem we have to redefine you know the male female dynamic which has been the problem for me i mean for day one from day one and i think across the board this country is so over sexualizing women that if you are not aware of how that's affecting um this overall problem then you are part of the problem and you don't even realize you're part of the problem and i always give this example about marilyn monroe yep you know i can say the name and we're all like oh yeah we all know in this country who she is and what we know about her is that she is icon if you think about it she's icon as a sex object she's still an object which means she's for sale right whereas how many people know what her IQ is it's 168 she's actually she was smarter than Albert Einstein that we don't talk about that yeah. because we've reduced women down to their vagina and yeah. their sexuality right. and and if we're going to really solve the problem we have to redefine what it means to be female and redefine what it is to be male so yeah i think that men have a lot to do you know, with with solving this massive amount of slavery in a place that we call the land of the free. Yeah. And and that's one of the major things with offenders, like Annie was saying, they see women as things. Yeah. They objectify them. And people will say, you know, this is this is where it's sneaky. Because it starts off like, well, oh, we judge pedophiles and we and we I mean, pedophiles need to be put somewhere. However, how many times are you just is it socially acceptable to go to a strip club or or to look at a woman, you know, as she walks by in the office, or whatever it is that you're doing, um, you're actually not seeing her. And I always pose this question, and people love it when I do. Um, imagine going into a strip club as a man, and your mom is on stage. But you're not. Yeah. How would you feel then. about that? You know, you, yeah. you okay? Because that's somebody's mom on stage. Yeah. You know, imagine you, you know, you're looking at this woman like, ooh, and you're looking at her, and however you're looking at her, she's walking down the street, whatever. What if that's your mom? Yeah. What if that's your sister? Yeah. How do you feel about that? Yeah. That's how you should see her because she is somebody's mom and she is somebody's sister. She's a human. Mm -hmm. And so when we start actually getting down to if you're going to serve love, serve love. If you're going to serve money, serve money. It basically boils down to those two things. And I think that all trafficking is rooted in greed and the love of money and hierarchy. And I could sit here for the next four hours and rattle off a whole bunch of other things. And you've been on to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to commercial break. And I, I would. I, I would. And sometimes we have to, you know. Not not today, though. Sometimes yeah. I say inappropriate things, you cut to commercial break. Go ahead. And that's on the radio documentary I interviewed uh, people from CASE, which is the Chicago Alliance mm -hmm. Against Sexual Exploitation. Yep. And one of the 
uh, examples they gave was that one of their staff persons, a male, went to a bachelor party over the weekend with 10 guys, and one of the guys was like, hey, let's get a stripper for the groom. Right. And he was like, uh, this is not okay with me. Yeah. You know what I do yeah. for a yeah. living. I'm trying to stop this. And so he put a kibosh on it. Kibosh. That guy was mad, but the other eight guys came to him over the weekend individually and said, thank you. Yeah. I didn't want to do it. Yeah. But they said in their research, they found that this is how it gets started yeah. is that one person instigates it in a group and then the other guys, if they don't talk about it, they think, oh, everybody wants to do this. Everybody's right. doing this, right. which isn't true. And I think it's because that's how we've defined masculinity. We've defined masculinity and we've set you guys up to fail. So we've defined it as a society by saying, you are a man if, how many girls you slept with in college? You know, how many girls want you? All these things, notching your belt, blah, 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 right? Well, what if we had a crazy idea and redefined masculinity and said, actually, um, masculinity is uh, protecting women and fighting for them yeah. because there's something I think intrinsically with men that wants to do that we just don't we shouldn't be picking and choosing which ones we fight for and which ones we protect yeah I'm with you on that there's a there's an athletics uh, part of this discussion panel that's coming up tell me a little bit about that Wow um, well I grew up as a basketball coach's daughter yep and um, at the event we'll be talking about um, just the I mean, it's in the news right now. Yeah. Right? We're looking at stories where the NCAA is being brought down. And um, with the inside information that I've had um, and the experiences that I've had, that I think that it's important to talk about the fact that that's not just about some sneakers being sold right. um, to recruits and to donors and to the team and the athletic department. That, um, you know, I know, I think it was in the 90s, they got busted for like paying off recruits. Yeah. And I said, uh, actually, before the article came out, I said, I what they've done, the game hasn't changed. They've just basically, now they're doing barter systems where they're giving them little girls. Mm. And so um, I think that, that some of those things need to be talked about in a little bit more detail, and I'm going to wait until the 30th. But that's well, the yeah, point. I knew that. I mean, you're going to open up the war chest yeah, on the 30th because yeah, that's what happens. I mean, you get around her, sooner or later something's <laughs> going to hit the fan. And, <laughs> but there's people out there that really don't want it to happen. Trust they, me on There's that. a lot of people yeah. that really don't want me to say anything. I do. I want you to talk oh, about you Oh, I'm going to. I, being around you is good. That's a good thing. I know that. So this is 7 o'clock coming up on the uh, 30th right here at Muskegon Community College. You will be there. Senator Judy Ed, Ed, Edmonds will yes. be there. Uh, Connie Esbury will be there. And uh, the, the professor's name again? David Manville. David Manville. I know that there is interest from people. I've, I've you know, uh, a mutual Facebook friend is said uh, she's thinking about driving over from the other side of the state. Yeah, there's it, people. Uh, uh, we've had I've had so many requests um, for people outside of the state to say, "Can this get live streamed? Yeah. Can this?" Can We're working on that too. We're working on that too. Awesome. So, so, so we can get a live stream so it can be shared around the world. Your work is amazing. Thank you. Getting to know you has been fantastic. Agreed. Thank and you. And to be honest with you, me putting these two together. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take credit for it any day of the week. It's coming up on the 30th. It'll be out here on a Monday night at Muskegon Community College. Connie, great to see you again. Yep, Tell Dale too. thank you for giving us the space today okay. and then on the 30th. Yep. You? As always. Anytime. I'm here for you. I'm the same with you. The real face of sex trafficking here at Muskegon Community College coming up on the 30th. If you're interested, be out here. All the details will be right here on the Muskegon channel.